All right. First of all, um, wanted to start off. You know, I, I hate that I even have to say this, but I think uh, I made a comment earlier that was definitely taken out of context. I am very excited. I have been in a good mood because of the confidence I have in this team. But by no means is that a slight to anybody, you know, like Jared, who has done a phenomenal job for the last four years here. You know, I, I hated that I even have to address that, but I do think out of respect for him and all the good things he's done, I am in a good mood, but that doesn't mean it. It's not because we're working together uh, or because of just Stafford exclusively. There's a lot of good things going on that I feel really good about and I'm confident about. So don't twist my words when I didn't say that. All right. Thank you. That being said, I am in a good mood still and uh, excited about having a little break. I thought our guys got a lot better. I thought we got a lot of good work in this offseason. We're, we're healthy, uh, guys feel good, and we want to come back in the next six weeks when we report on July 25th for the rookies and quarterbacks, and the veterans on the 27th hit the ground running, and uh, a lot of good things to come. Guys, go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, hi, Sean. You, you said uh, that you're healthy. Um, is, does anybody have any health issues that need to be, uh, uh, I don't know, taken care of, addressed? Uh, worried about between now and training camp? Don't anticipate that being an issue, Kevin. Feel good. Uh, everybody is expected to be ready to roll for the start of camp on those report dates. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a blessing for a football team. Um, was traffic an issue for anybody uh, participating today? Yeah, yes, it was. It was a major issue. Guys that left at 245 did not get here until just a little bit past five. So that was the reason that we bumped it back. I uh, feel terrible, but I am appreciative of our guys. Man, it's uh, it's good to be back in person, but not good to have this damn traffic. I'll tell you that much. But yes, that was a major, major issue and a reason that we had to bump everything back an hour and why I trimmed off the, the last 30 minutes of practice. And then last thing for me, any different impressions of SoFi Stadium with people in it? Yes, it's it's even better. I just think, you know, you're reminded of the energy and the atmosphere that's created by the fans. I mean, to have 30,000, 35,000, whatever it was out here today, uh, you know, I said to a handful of our players and coaches, can you imagine how rocking this thing's going to be on Sunday night football when we open up against the Bears? Uh, that has me excited. Thank you. You're welcome. Stu? Hey, Sean, what did you feel like you were able to accomplish during this period and what's going to be at the top of the to-do list when training camp gets started? I know you've talked about this being a focus on technique and fundamentals and things like that with it not being a live setting. So with that in mind, what did you feel like you accomplished and what are you going to try to get done or focus on when camp starts? I think you just said it, Stu. Really, focus and concentration was on the technique, the fundamentals. If nothing else, the most important thing was being around the guys. You know, our players getting a feel for some of our new coaches, continuing to build on the relationships already established with the previous coaches, some of our new players, whether it be guys like Stafford or the rookie class, Deshaun Jackson, guys like that coming in, getting, uh, you know, acclimated to how we want to operate. Uh, and then there's been a major focus on the mental elements, you know, being able to do some of these jog throughs, being able to stress one another offensively and defensively getting a lot of good stuff from the foundational principles that we want to implement in the kicking game with Joe D as our special teams coordinator and Dwayne Stukes doing an outstanding job there as well. Um, so that's what we've kind of gotten out of it. But once we come back for training camps too, there's the mental and then there's the physical and there is it's full speed ahead. And we're going to be smart with how we onboard these guys and have a progression build up, but it goes a lot faster. There's a lot less days off. And, uh, you know, everything is geared towards getting ready to peak at the right time when we open up against the Bears. Claudia? Hey, Sean. Except for a few positions, your depth chart is still an open book. How did you like the competition for roster spots on defense and offense? Yeah, I'm excited about really seeing that thing come to life once we get to training camp, Claudia. I feel really good about the roster that we do have right now. I think it's competitive in all the positions. Uh, but the physical evaluations when we can really go 11 on 11 uh, and some faster speeds uh, is going to be a more helpful way of really trying to evaluate guys that are competing for starting positions and competing for roster spots uh, to really illustrate, all right, hey, I'm deserving of this. I'm going to earn it. We're going to go out and compete. And so this has been an awesome time for the techniques, the fundamentals, and then the physical and mental will be evaluated really in training camp. But feel good about where we're at with our roster. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. 
Eric? Hey, so I wanted to ask you about uh, Jake Funk and, and what you saw from him during OTAs and, and out here in the camp. Yeah, Eric, he's a, he's a mature rookie. I think he's really taken to Thomas Brown. Uh, what a great job Thomas does as a coach, really helping these guys grow. And because you get a little bit extra time with these rookies, with just some of the meetings and the way that we had it over the last month since these guys have been with us, you've really seen his growth, his comfort level. Um, I think kind of like what we've said about a lot of guys, it'll be great to really be able to truly physically evaluate these guys. Some of the offensive skill players, you're able to get a better feel for watching them throw and catch, move around and some of the ball handling drills. And I think he's done a nice job. He's been as advertised and uh, I like the consistency that he's come out with every single day. And, and he's definitely gotten more and more comfortable with all the different things that were thrown at him from an installation perspective. Hey, Sean. You're welcome. Jordan. Hey, Sean, I have a, a couple of uh, maybe technical or positional questions for you, if you don't mind indulging me on that. Um, <laughs> David okay. Long, what are you seeing from him, um, not only as he's playing on the outside, obviously necessity being some reasons for some guys coming in, in and out, but um, are, are you thinking that he might be an option for you guys at, at nickel as well? I think he's done a great job. I think the, uh, you know, whoever runs the scoreboard, we got to get the right profile picture up they had him up at Troy Hill's picture today so uh David has been one of the guys that yeah I know Greg I see your face I was like oh man we got to get the right profile pick for my man David Long but uh he's done a great job Jordan I think he you know he's really done a nice job elevating his game at the outside location he has been a guy that has some position flex inside but I think he's really really done a nice job of growing he's gotten a lot of really valuable beneficial reps where you've seen him tangibly improved throughout the course of this offseason because the one thing that we have done full speed is a lot of seven on seven. He's taken to Coach Evero, Coach Cooley, and, and Coach Morris's teaching progression, understanding concepts better. And I've been really pleased with David, and he is a guy that we're going to count on. And uh, he's we're expecting him to be a big-time contributor for us. And on Jacob Harris, I understand Tyler was not practicing through this portion of things, um, but what was the reasoning in working him right into the fire this week, especially when you guys are in seven on sevens, and then as well as getting him some reps with Matthew Stafford? Yeah, I think he's just earned it, Jordan. Uh, they're, they're obviously, Tyler's uh, the lead dog. He's done a great job. I think he is one of the most complete tight ends in this league. And when he's feeling good, uh, you know, Tyler Higby can do it all for us. And Jacob Harris is a great addition to that room. I think he's a, a guy that has a tremendous amount of upside. Wes Phillips has done a really nice job of getting him up to speed. Uh, but his natural just range, catch radius, body control for a player of his size is pretty rare. I mean, I think you guys can see for NFL guys to stand out the way that he's done in some of these limited settings in shorts and in helmets uh, he's definitely made a positive impression. Uh, we all understand that it's about when you put the pads on and how that truly translates. But I think it's because he's earned it, Jordan. And I've been very pleased with him. And, and he's, uh, you know, he's smart, he's conscientious, and he's done a great job improving throughout. Last one for me, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Brian Allen, uh, noticing him taking a couple of reps at right guard. Coleman Shelton is second team. Obviously, it's the second team, but Brian, uh, Coleman Shelton at center. Um, what's the decision-making process in not only throwing Coleman into those second team reps, but also moving Brian? Yeah, it's really just to get the rotation, Jordan. You know, Brian is a guy that I have uh, more than, I have a lot of confidence in his ability to be a starter for us. If that's, uh, you know, if, if that's earned and that's what he does, I think he's played at a high level. I think physically, you know, you say, all right, how's he coming off of that knee injury from a couple years ago? I think physically he looks strong. He's sturdy. He's a conscientious guy. Football means a whole lot to him. He loves it. He's a great competitor. But that rotation is more just a reflection of, all right, we've got three centers that we're rotating through with Corbett, with Brian Allen, and with Coleman Shelton. And so that was just a reflection of with that group today, hey, let's go ahead and, and get Coleman a couple reps at the center spot. So then Brian naturally bumps over to that guard. Thanks, Sean. You're welcome. We'll wrap up here with Gary, Lindsay, and Nick, please. Uh, hey, Sean, um, is there, are there any areas of your roster where you might consider signing someone in the interim before you guys get the, you know, before you get to camp or are you set? Yeah, I think there's a couple positions that we would talk about and 
you know, the interesting thing is, is you got to think about, all right, we're going to get some competitive opportunities to practice against the Raiders, against the Cowboys, but I still do plan on taking a similar approach where uh, not many of our guys are going to play in the preseason. And so there is an element of those conversations that will be necessary. What exactly that means, I think that's kind of, you know, Les and I were actually talking about that before practice today, Gary, and I talked about that with our coaches yesterday. So we'll continue to evaluate that, but that could be something that we would potentially look into. We felt like we wanted to add depth, um, you know, to have a more competitive roster, but also to help us get through those three preseason games. And then you uh, kind of addressed this earlier uh, in the news conference uh, earlier today, but in terms of the expectations that you guys will have going into the season, I know you say you embrace it, um, but is there pressure that comes with that specifically on you to get this team to the Super Bowl? No, I think uh, every single team, every single team has the goal of trying to win a championship and anybody that's given themselves a real chance to compete for it knows you earn it one day at a time. Um, this job is about pressure day in and day out. You know, I, I think, uh, I think that that's, that's what you want. You know, if, if you start avoiding pressure, if you don't like it, this is not for you. And you and I both know that Gary. And so we've got a lot of guys that know that that confidence is earned. I think it's the same thing for our coaches. And I'm not really worried about an outside in perspective. I'm more worried about an inside out. And our guys do believe that that's something we can accomplish, but they also know that there's no way that you can do that. Right now, you do it one day at a time. And, and the goal for us to put ourselves in a position to even be relevant is by taking care of your business uh, one day at a time and, and putting ourselves in a position to do, do a great job in that opener. And, and then finally, from me, um, how are, do you plan to spend the break? Are you going to be able, are you going to get out of the country? Are you going to stay home? What, what's, what are your plans for the summer? Yeah, so I'll be around for a little bit. And then, uh, you know, because of uh, all this COVID, I'm going to be engaged for about five years, but uh, we originally planned to get married overseas and didn't get a refund on it, but they gave us a credit. So we're going to travel overseas. Uh, my fiance, Veronica, is uh, she's the leader of the of the house setting up those trips and all the kinds of things. But we'll go to New York and then uh, we'll actually be able to get away and, and go to Greece and, uh, and Monaco. So be pretty special, Gary. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to live a little, enjoy myself, and then I'll come back stressed and ready to roll. <laughs> Thanks very much. Awesome. Uh, Sean, are you able to share with us how many players on your team have been fully vaccinated? I, you know, I, I would say probably not, Lindsay. I think just because of the confidentiality and the consideration for all those guys, um, we've had good things with that, but uh, the exact numbers you know, there were some opportunities to actually get vaccinated today as well. So those are things that I, I would say I, I'm not uh, comfortable sharing, but I think you want to be considered to everybody with, with matters like this. And just regarding those lines, have you had conversations with your team um, just about the vaccine and what that could or may or may not mean for you guys going forward into the season? We have, you know, and I think you have experts that, that you want to give them educational understanding that is outside of my arena, uh, but you want to help guys understand, okay, what are the possibilities? You know, we still haven't gotten full clarification either on, all right, if you get to everybody throws around the 85%, what does that exactly mean in terms of the restrictions or people that are vaccinated that aren't? Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're waiting for a lot of the direction from the league and then that'll dictate and determine, you know, how you have those conversations. But the number one thing that's most important to me is consideration to these guys uh, because there's a lot of different reasons why people feel comfortable. It might not be a big deal to get the vaccine, or it might be a big deal. And I think you have to be empathetic and understanding to everybody's individual approach. Thanks. You're welcome. We'll wrap up with you, Nick. Hey, Coach. Uh, you spoke earlier about Jacob Harris. Is there a specific area where you envision him to be? Is it like an all-everywhere type of tight end, or is it an inline type of tight end? Is it, or is it too soon to even you know, gauge that right now. Yeah, I think it's a little bit too soon. Uh, but what I would say, Nick, is I think the, the smart thing would be if he can play in a variety of spots, that's going to be the, the way that we can put the most pressure on people. If he can play as an attached tight end, he can play in the slot, he can be, be detached out wide. Uh, that's the kind of skill set that I think he projects to have. But again, until we really put the pads on, you know, because you look at what he was doing in college, he was basically lined up as a receiver. Um, and so being able to make that transition to the tight end and, and being attached to the core and doing the different things that we ask of that spot, there will be a learning curve. I think he's handled it nicely up to this point, but we'll get a real chance to evaluate that and, and allow that to kind of 
um, you know, come to life uh, based on how he handles it. And I am confident he'll handle it well. Thanks, Coach. Safe travels. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that.